Hello again. I may sound like a broken record, nonetheless, I am glad to see you made it to episode 4. You may not think you are special in any way for making it to the fourth episode, but compare the views on this episode to episode 1, and you may see a trend. A lot of people didn't make it past the first video. A smaller fraction left after the second, and the trend continues. This is common for most tutorial series on YouTube. Let's take a second to appreciate where you are currently at. You watch the informational videos and you set up your workspace. At a glance, it doesn't seem too special. Let's dive a little deeper. There's a good chance you thought this was going to be a walk in the park, and with the right instruction, it is. But getting the motivation to get up off the couch and take that walk is difficult. You are the walker in this analogy. You got your lazy ass up off the couch and walked out the door. To you, it may not seem like much, but a large amount of people struggle with motivation on a daily basis. With that said, let's get into the topic for today. We are going to be familiarizing ourselves with our IDE. If you are not using IntelliJ, things may not be in the same location, but most IDEs are relatively similar. Let's open up IntelliJ and take a look at what we are working with. Upon opening, you will be greeted by the welcome page. This is where you can see all of your recent projects, edit program settings, manage plugins, and view courses from JetBrains. Start by hitting new project. A window like this should pop up and for different types of applications you will need to choose a library or framework to work with. For now we are going to make a simple Java project. Up the top where it says Project SDK is where you will choose the version of JDK you want to use for your application. I'm going to select version 11 and then press next. This next page allows you to create a project from a template. This is useful if you want to make a template for common applications. You could even make a template for bucket plugins. We will cover templates later on in the series. This next page is where you name your project and set the location. The name of the project you put here is completely independent from what your plugin is going to be named. Conventionally, you will name this the same name as your plugin, but it has no real effect. Your name should not contain any spaces and each word should start with a capital letter. After choosing your project name and location, press finish. This window is where you will spend most of your time. Before we start talking about that, if you are like me and would like to see the welcome page each time you start up IntelliJ, go to File, Settings, and under Appearance and Behavior, select System Settings. Then in the Project section, uncheck the Reopen Projects on Startup box and press Apply. Back to talking about the working environment. On the left hand side is your project window. This is essentially a file manager similar to Windows Explorer. The main difference is instead of only being able to view a single directory, you are able to see the entire folder tree inside of your project directory. If you go to the directory where you saved your project, you will see all of the corresponding folders and files. You can collapse and reopen the project window by clicking project on the left. In the center of your screen is the text editor. Currently nothing is open, so it is empty. That's all we really need to talk about right now. Now we need to implement Bucket into our project. Right now, IntelliJ has no idea what Bucket is. To do this, you can click on File, Project Structure, or the shortcut is Control alt shift s This window is essentially the settings for your current project. You can edit the JDK version, add libraries, and much more. To add Bucket to your project, Click on Modules under Project Settings on the left, then navigate to the Dependencies tab. This is where you can add dependencies for your project. We want to add Bucket as a dependency, so we are going to click on the plus icon in the Dependencies window. Then select Jars or Directories, then navigate to where you compiled the Bucket API from last episode and select the jar file. It doesn't matter if you are using Craft Bucket or Spigot. On the right side, under Scope, select the drop-down and set it to Provided. This lets our project know not to compile the Bucket API with our plugin. If you leave this set as Compiled, you will have an abnormally sized plugin file. Click on Apply and close the window. 
bucket is now a part of our project. If you go to the project window and select the drop down under external libraries, you will see the JDK version as well as the bucket API. If you are curious to see where the API files are at, select the org drop down, then bucket, and this is all of the information. If your project is combining directories, click on the settings cog at the top of the project window and uncheck compact middle packages. Now that you are familiar with what we are working with, let's start making our plugin. The SRC or source folder is where all of your project files will go. We will only be working in this folder. Now let's create the directory for our plugin. To do this, right click on your source folder and select new package. A package is another word for a folder. The purpose of this package is to be uniquely named. If your package has the same name as another package on your server, the API will get confused. To keep this name unique, we use the following naming convention. Com dot your Minecraft username dot project name. It is important that your package name is all lowercase. Let's create a package that follows this naming convention. If you are curious, the period is equal to the file separator character. So this is the same as the slash on Windows or Linux or the colon on Mac. The next step is to create a file which will contain the code for our plugin. To do this, simply right click on the lowest level package you just created, the package with an identical name to your project. In this case, the package I will select is the package named first plugin. Then select new, Java class, a class in Java is a file that contains code. When naming classes in Java, you want to capitalize the first letter of each word and include no spaces. This is the same naming convention as your project name. I'm going to name this main class, as it will be our main class. At the top of the class is the package the class is in. It should be identical to what you set as your package names. In my case, it says net.devmclovin.firstplugin. After this is a semicolon. In Java, a semicolon lets the computer know where an instruction ends. The semicolon is part of the syntax in Java. The word syntax is derived from the Greek language. The word can be hard to define, especially if not familiar with how it is used. I could give you a definition, but it won't have any real meaning until you are familiar with the concept. The next relevant line is the class definition, public class main class. This is followed by two braces. Some people like to call these curly brackets, but the correct term is braces. Braces are another part of syntax in Java. My project may look a little different than yours because my opening brace is on the next line below my class definition. This has no effect in the execution of your code, it is only visually different. Everything contained within these two curly braces are inside your class. Another way to represent something as nested or inside of another class is to indent it. If you begin typing between the braces, each new line you create will automatically be indented. This will help you organize your code visually. On the top line where it says public class main class, append extends Java plugin. Your main class will always extend Java plugin. The words Java plugin will be in red. To fix this, hover over Java plugin with your mouse and select import class. If you are unable to import the class, you did not set up your bucket dependency correctly for your project. You may have noticed a box pop up when you were typing Java plugin. This is known as IntelliSense. This is essentially auto completion for your IDE. When typing, you can select the top result by pressing enter or navigate through different suggestions by using the arrow keys. I will use this method for importing classes now on. You may notice I said for importing classes. That is because Java plugin is actually a class provided by the bucket API. If you select Java plugin and then press control N and select Java plugin, you will be brought to the Java plugin class. You don't have to know what any of this stuff does, you just need to understand that Java plugin is a class and not some form of magic. This is where we are going to be stopping for today. If you are worried you won't remember all of the steps for everything we did, don't stress. I do not expect you to memorize everything the first time around. It took me over 10 projects to finally memorize the steps to create a project. 
I had to watch a tutorial every time I wanted to make one because I would forget a couple of steps. This is completely normal. As your code is right now, it will not work if you were to compile your plugin and run your server. We will go over the final requirements for making a plugin next time. Before you go, I want you to reflect on what you just did. An hour ago, you had no idea how to even create a new project. It may not seem like much, but you are going to be doing this kind of thing quite often. It is one of the many foundational skills you will need to program. With that said, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.